Well, I would like to thank for for this organization, great organization. I have been uh, listening to colleagues from, uh, I mean, all all around the globe for two days now, uh, and uh, I also thank for uh, for the kind invitation. Um, uh, of course, what what I have listened to for the the two days and what you you will be watching today might be quite different or quite 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 diverse um, uh, for well my title is uh, from a medieval town into a modern capital but uh, we all know that uh, in the 1900s there there were no medieval uh, towns on the world, but uh, just to uh, know about this uh, part of the continent, the uh, old continent and uh, Asia, the Middle East, uh, and the nor northern globe, uh, I would uh, start reminding you that Anatolia is mentioned as the bridge between East and West, or it is the cradle of civilizations, or uh, it is the midpoint, uh, I mean, around Istanbul, uh, the main component of Eurasia, which, which is a connection between Europe and Asia. And it is a, a highly prominent uh, Silk Road alternative. If you, if if the Silk Road would uh, rather prefer the uh, land, I mean the connections and the land, then Anatolia is uh, totally a historic bridge. And this strategic strategical position has been. Uh, the case for, uh, I mean, for long centuries. Uh, on the right hand side up is uh, a map showing uh, the uh, circulation or uh, uh, dispersion of the humankind uh, on the globe. Uh, it is as early as uh, 8,000 BC that people walked through, uh, passed through the Anatolian Peninsula uh, to reach other uh, lands that they they could uh, live. I mean, of course, the, this uh, this was continual through centuries. Uh, and almost all um, settlements on Anatolia, whether, whether they are towns, small towns, cities, or villages, are uh, of historic origin. There, there is something, some layer uh, behind every uh, settlement, every village, every town. Uh, if we count, for instance, uh, today, uh, more than 90 cities have citadels, uh, which is unique to the Anatolian Peninsula. They are not torn down, usually, or they are in a rugged, uh, uh, worn out position, they might be, but they are there still. So just uh, reminding uh, the uh, lecture of Alvaro Dominguez uh, in the opening session. Um, well, the uh, citadels are the boiled condition of the settlements, really. And they are historic. They are part of history. Uh, the case uh, is true for Ankara as well. Uh, it has one of the magnificent citadels, uh, which had uh, three uh, city walls. The third one, the outer one, was torn out uh, in late 19th century. 
but uh, partially it was there. Uh, and I mean, I thought this kind of introduction might work well to start with the story of Ankara. My uh, story of Ankara, of course, it is partial history, uh, complies with three parts. This three-partite narrative is related with the uh, Republican history of Ankara. Uh, I will try to read from the beginning of the abstract. 16 days before the proclamation of the Republic, the, on October the 13th, 1923, Ankara was announced as the capital of the newly founded state, the Turkish Republic, which dethroned Istanbul of the Ottoman Empire, the famous capital uh, for 470 years, almost five centuries. Ankara was already the center of Turkish independence war for two and a half years, while the founding cadre of the Republic had moved to the town of 30,000 population. Of course, that 30,000 population in early 1920 uh, was uh, quite increased uh, during uh, the time of war. What you see is the first uh, cartographic map of Istanbul, of, of Ankara, sorry. Uh, it was uh, drawn to uh, decide for the new roads to be opened up. So this is a 30,000 uh, small town where this portion is the citadel, two citadel city walls inside, uh, can, can be called the Acropolis in, in terms of Greek uh, cities. Uh, and the, uh, this, this is the station. Uh, the railway arrived in Ankara in 1892. So uh, it was uh, a, a tool, a, a means of uh, raising the uh, average income of every household around Ankara, as Ankara was quite famous for Ankara goats and Angora rabbits. So uh, the only uh, location on the world uh, that uh, Ankara goats or Angora uh, goats were uh, tended was Ankara. It was the climate uh, that made the situation uh, quite positive. Uh, and it was a really um, uh, channel, a good channel to raise money. So uh, this is the 1924 map. And uh, of course, after, after the proclamation of the Republic, uh, what they could find uh, as expert uh, with low cost, uh, but within reach was around the uh, old capital, Istanbul. Uh, the German architect, uh, which was uh, part of a firm uh, functioning in Istanbul, designing for the uh, fire worn out areas of Istanbul was Karl Christoph Lörcher, or Lörcher, I mean, it depends. Uh, and he was called to Ankara. He was also commissioned to design the uh, German embassy buildings in Ankara in 1923, uh, and he, uh, he submitted a temporary design uh, around the citadel of Ankara, thinking that, uh, well, the 30,000 population 
city would grow around uh, and it would be sufficient uh, for the uh, location to uh, make the city more modernized uh, with the parliaments, with the uh, new uh, monuments, sculptures, with new areas of uh, national content uh, and with new perspectives and uh, just taking into account the values, the historic values uh, of the city as well. I mean, as you know, Augustus Temple from the first century BC, uh, one of the four examples uh, on which the uh, sayings uh, or the manifest of Augustus is inscribed is in Ankara. It is still in there. So uh, it was well known that uh, it was a province of Galatia before in 250. But uh, I mean, in this uh, narration, in the first cycle of the narration, I will uh, focus on uh, what was uh, seen and what was received by the uh, first sight see seers there. Uh, and Lerner, when uh, he arrived to Ankara and planned for Ankara, now he says that he found looks down uh, on. Uh, on the city from an airplane, then, or if an aerial photo of the city is taken, it will be grasped that the river sources and beds have decided for the making of the city at large. If one takes advantage of this gift by nature and implements and the design in mind, it might be possible to give today's barren city it is a barren city, which is without spirit. The form of a garden city surrounded by urban green parks with the natural topography uh, offering arbitrary grading of the terrain and the lowlands that might be turned into green, uh, the city can take a considerable place in the list of beautiful and remarkable cities. Karl Christoph Lerher is a German uh, from Charlottenburg in Berlin. Uh, and later, when, I mean, after he was commissioned the second plan for Ankara, he said in the plan note, in the plan, I tried to introduce the elegant, beautiful stedel to the panorama of the city at several viewpoints, maintaining this in quite a few locations. Now, these uh, short quotations show that uh, Lerscher was uh, quite involved in uh, the green uh, city, garden city movement uh, with se several notions in design. And he was also informed about the Bruno Tauts Stadtkrone concept, which uh, Taut wrote uh, starting in 1916. Uh, it is as if they found a, uh, an already designed object, historic object uh, of Stadtkrone in the city of Ankara when, when they arrived. These are just two engravings, quite early engravings from Ankara. Uh, and um, uh, in, in the first plans, uh, well, uh, actually the uh, population of the city was uh, quite, quite increasing with a pace, with a high pace. And the 1924 uh, plans, which envisaged to squeeze the 
or to en enlarge the old historic town into the new capital was not sufficient. And uh, in a year's time, it was inevitable to design for a new town, new city to the south of Ankara, to the Stadal of Ankara. And while designing this, uh, it is a partial design show, showing the area. What uh, Lurcher did was uh, open up new housing environments, ha housing uh, lots, parcels for, for the newcomers to Ankara. Uh, the total population of Turkey was by then 13 million in total. Uh, and a new republic or a new kind of state was being, being found uh, in the area. And what Blurcher did uh, with a with an open-minded, uh, I mean, architect designer or architect city planner, uh, was that he thought of the new parliament, which would be the third parliament of the city, uh, to uh, reside in the axis of the new town development, which was open uh, through a cooperative, housing cooperative, to the new settlers. Uh, and uh, it was in a wedge shape, shape as, as, as you see, at the culminating point, and it is almost a hilltop, is the parliament building and the uh, low, lower grounds were spared for the uh, other, other ministries of the new regime. Uh, on the counterpart, there was another a wedge designed uh, in a reflected uh, shape. And this, this was the ground for the civil servants. So uh, the reverse uh, wedge uh, was there. And it was uh, quite sufficient for the time it was thought of for uh, 300,000 uh, capital city of Ankara. So from uh, 30,000, it would develop to 300,000, which uh, would, would be sufficient, it was thought. Um, and the new plan in 1925 was bringing together the uh, old city with the Acropolis there, and the old city there, the station uh, which, which ended uh, at, at this point, and the new city he called Chankraya. Um, well, however, it was not still sufficient. So the administration, the city administration, the municipality, had an invited competition for Ankara plan in 1927. And they uh, called, they invited very well known uh, start planners and architects uh, to enter uh, the competition. Hermann Janssen and Josef Briggs were from Berlin. Uh, Hermann Janssen had uh, joined the 1910 Berlin, uh, Berlin design competition, city plan competition, and had came the first. And Joseph Briggs, Briggs who was uh, an older uh, member as an architect, uh, was in the competition as well with a uh, I mean, award. And Leon Jossley was known, I mean, the French uh, city planner was known for his plans for Barcelona in 1910s. So only these three were invited to join the, the, the competition. Um, and uh, Janssen won. 
and uh, he he concluded the, the design for Ankara around 1932. After four years, he was informed that he was the winner. Uh, he he did not live in Ankara uh, as other uh, as other contributors did, but uh, just uh, to mention, uh, just passing by. Uh, the the administration or uh, the cadre of the new republic was quite keen about the quality uh, of the contributions in terms of uh, city design, city making. Uh, for now, uh, well, after uh, after the occurrences of the, uh, the First World War. And after the allies between Germany, uh, Ottoman Empire were defeated, as you would know, Istanbul, the 470 year uh, capital of the Ottoman Empire was uh, invaded just over a night. So it was the uh, idea of the uh, Republican cadre that they should remove, they should distance from Istanbul to the heart of Anatolia, uh, which was by then uh, a two and a half day distance uh, on land. Uh, and it would be much more uh, secure uh, to uh, ground a new capital, to ground a new uh, a new center for, for the administration. Uh, and they were also keen about uh, hiring or commissioning architects, planners, sculptors uh, in uh, making the city a model city for uh, all the other cities, uh, I mean, around Anatolia or the new uh, Republic or the new administration. Um, I think what is uh, quite uh, different in this uh, story is that uh, from 1924 on, uh, the city has a population of 20 to 30,000 people, and then uh, it departs with an a 